Hi, I'm Katie Halcrow with Power Up Prep, and I'm super excited today to take you through some tips and strategies to help you power up your ACT. If this is your first time with us, first, welcome. Second, check out the link below. There, you're going to find the ACT questions and the note sheets that you can do along with these videos. All right, so let's get those materials together and we're gonna be ready to power up. All right, we're back to talk about more question types. So we've already talked about yes, yes, no, no questions and data questions, which are really big ticket items on the science test, but there are a few more specific types of questions that are good to know in order to be able to efficiently do them and get them right. The first of these is comparison questions. So comparison questions happen when they say, oh, compared to experiment one, experiment two, blah, 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 blah. So it'll mention two experiments and it'll ask you to compare or contrast those experiments. When you're doing that, when they ask about um, experiment comparisons, the first year thing you're gonna look like at, like you do all the time, is you're going to look at charts, graphs, tables, diagrams, and equations to see if between the two experiments, there's any apparent difference in the experiments. So if axis labels are different, then they're measuring different things. So that would be an apparent difference between the experiments. So then you would be easy, that it would be easily answered because you would see that they were measuring something different and so you could just pick what they were measuring differently. It's a little bit harder if all of the labels are the same. So if they have the same keys, they have the same axis labels, they have, they have the same table headings, it's hard to figure out what the difference is between them. Take an example with frogs. Let's say that they were trying to figure out um, how two experiments about frogs were different and they had the exact same tables and charts. So there was a table that measured how high they jumped and then there was a chart that measured how much they ate. So in both of the experiments, they had those exact same tables. For the second experiment, those values were higher, but again, they were still measuring the same thing. So we can't really see what's different about the experiments. In that case, what we do is we read the text underneath the second experiment. So the experiment one has a little write-up and then the charts or graphs, and then experiment two has a little write-up and then the charts or graphs. If the charts and graphs are not any different, what we do is we read that little paragraph right up, but only for study two, because what happens in these experiments is that the first experiment will talk about the experiment as a whole, but then the second experiment will only talk about how it's different than the first experiment. So it is very efficient to just look at the second experiment because you actually don't need to look at the first experiment in order to know how they're different because the second experiment will tell you. So in this frog example, let's say the second experiment when we read that paragraph said, everything was the same except the mass of the frogs was increased by 50%. Well, boom, there, we know exactly what happened and it also explains why those frogs jumped higher and ate more because they weighed, their mass was higher. So um, when you're doing a comparison question, first, as always, look at those charts and graphs and tables. If there is no apparent difference between them, if they seem like they're measuring the exact same thing, then what you're going to do is you're going to look at the, the experiment that comes next. So if you're, if you're comparing experiment two to experiment three, you're gonna read experiment three. If you're comparing experiment one to experiment two, you're gonna read experiment two. You're just gonna read that little paragraph to see what is different between them because that will tell you. Okay, so that's comparison questions. Now what we're gonna talk about are definition questions. So definition questions happen, they're, easier to, they're easy to recognize because one of the words in the question is going to be in italics, and then the question will define it. For example, let's say they gave us a question and it went, density is found by dividing the total mass of a substance by its total volume. Based on figures two and three, what is the density of wood? Okay, so we will not find density in anything in the experiment because they've defined it for us. So it's not going to be present in the experiment. Instead, we're going to use the definition to help us find the answer. So the definition says that it's dividing the total mass by the total volume. So 
Based on figures two and three, we find mass for wood and we find volume for wood. And so we're going to use that information to find the density. So we don't find density anywhere in the experiment, but we can use the definition they gave us to help us. Um, so we use the definition they give you to find matching data. And sometimes we just use the, match, the, the definition to use our own logic for a situation. Um, sometimes they just give us enough information by the definition and we can just eliminate choices and pick the correct answer based on the definition they give us. Um, then one other thing to think about is that sometimes they're not defining a word, sometimes they're defining a relationship. So for example, um, let's say the question said, heat increases as light intensity increases. Based on figure three, when would you expect to find the hottest temperatures of the day? Okay, so then we are not getting a definition in the truest sense of the word because they're not like defining light intensity or heat. But when we look at figure three, we see that figure three has time of day and light intensity. And so if we're trying to find the hottest temperatures, we know that light intensity um, is directly related to heat. So as light intensity increases, heat increases. So the hottest part of the day would be when light intensity is the highest. So that is defining a relationship for us and we can use that relationship to help us answer the question. So sometimes when we're doing definition questions, we're using the definition to find matching data and then or using our own logic to answer the question. And then other times the, it involves figuring out a relationship or applying a defined relationship to a trend like we did in the second example in order to get the question right. Okay, so that's how you do definition questions. So then the last type of question that we're gonna talk about are mixture questions. So in these questions, they're gonna ask you to find a resulting value from mixing two different substances together. So they might tell you like, oh, we have a gasoline that has an octane level of 80 and we have a gasoline that has an octane level of 110. If we mix the two, what would be the likely outcome of octane level? And so when you're doing that, what you're doing is you're gonna find the individual, the value for each individual component. Um, so value of gasoline A, value of gasoline B, so 80 and 110. And then in the answer choices, you're going to choose an answer choice that's within that range. So you're gonna choose an answer choice that might be like 90 or 95, or might be, the answer choice might say between 80 and 110. So if you're doing a mixture question, what you're doing is you're finding an independent value for each thing that you're mixing, which might require going to charts or graphs. And then after you do that, you mix, when you mix them together, what will result is a value that's in between those two endpoints. All right, we're all set on question types. Let's go. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope that this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to leave them below. We love to hear from you. Also, if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button so that you won't miss out on any of our curriculum or other tips and tricks that can help you power up your ACT.